What's going on, guys? My name is Nick Abraham. I am going to walk you through our inbox management process. So I did a video in the past. I think if you just type in Nick Abraham inbox management, maybe we could pop it up right here. It will come up and that will give you a really good detail of subsequences and how they work. And I'm only going to do a quick overview of it, but I really want to show you the new automations we've built to be able to manage the 150 clients that we have at Leadbird. I think we have over 6,000 inboxes and we send over a million emails per month and we get a ton of responses. And this is how we're able to then get all the responses and make sure that we're handling them properly to actually convert them into leads. So let's get right into it. So in my past video, I kind of explained how we were going about categorizing replies. And I talked about using AI to categorize replies and we've actually turned that model off and here's why. And a lot of people are trying to figure this out themselves are trying to figure out how to use AI to categorize replies. And for the most part, it's super hard, specifically if you run a Legion agency. I think it's very possible if you're running like one offer. And the reason why is because every email structure differently. There's a tons of different replies that happen that you may have trained the data set on to be positive in this scenario, but it doesn't happen in this scenario. So just tons of issues. And we just found way more misfires than we would like. And so instead of using AI to categorize emails now, what we're doing is basically just using rule-based text. So, or I guess text-based rules to categorize a majority of the replies and the rest is done manually. So what do I mean by that, right? If you look at all your out of office messages, they have pretty much the same three phrases out of office, Oh, 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 vacation, things like that. And then you're able to, you know, read a reply, see if it has the phrase in it and then categorize accordingly. Same thing with the unsubscribe messages. Everyone that, you know, tells you to unsubscribe, they usually just say that unsubscribe. And so if you can, you know, get that text, then you know, hey, let me just go add them to the block list and tag them accordingly and things of that sort. So that's kind of how we go about doing the auto categorization, but it only categorizes accurately like 10%. And then the rest of the 90 percent we're probably you know categorizing it manually so we have full-time inbox manager and that's what he does all day he's just going through the replies reading them and then categorizing them as such and so these are all the different types of categorizations we use and the reason why we go this granular is because it helps you understand how to adjust the campaign to get the results and get a great understanding of how the campaign is performing. Once again, campaigns, the best way to analyze them, and I made another video of this as well, you know, talking about the best KPIs to look at when you're actually analyzing a cold email campaign, you have to look at the actual sentiment of the replies to understand how to adjust your campaign. So if you're getting an extremely high unsubscribe rate or an extremely high not interested rate, then you know that, hey, what I'm selling in the email to the market that I'm selling to, they're just not interested. So how do I adjust those kind of core offer issues to make it something that they would be actually interested in? And you can kind of use that to adjust things. Anyways, this is how we categorize everything. I'll quickly go through it. Information is just if someone's requesting more info. Power is like if someone's saying, hey, this sounds really cool. And then you basically put them into a power sequence, which will reply to them and basically say, hey, thanks for getting back to me. I'd love to set up a time to talk, which day is better for you. And then media already lead for us. This is like what we actually bill and send to our clients. This is someone that's showing interest and is also wanting to get on a call. That's a meeting ready to meet. And we forward that over our client. They take it over. They go ahead and set the appointment and so forth. Future is like if someone's requesting us to reach at a later time, not interested and unsubscribe. So we separate these two. And I think that's very important that you do this as well. So not interested just is like a kind, hey, this isn't for us at the moment. Unsubscribe is dumb just telling you to take you off the list because you can actually reach out to these on not interested again, because maybe you hit them again in you know six months and now they are suddenly in the market for whatever you're selling or you adjust your offer to something that they actually would be interested in. but unsubscribe you should reach out to them again you're only going to increase the chance of getting your email market spam so mark up as unsubscribe add them to the dnc don't ever reach out to them again custom pause and reply so this is for our inbox management team this is like if the lead asks a question that we have the answer to and we don't need the client's intervention to be able to answer it so if they like email and say hey where are you based out of i'm super interested in that situation our inbox management Manager is able to just go look up on LinkedIn to see where our client's based out of and say, hey, I'm based in Dallas, Texas. Would love to find a time to speak. What day is better for you? You know, and then kind of go that way. Out of office. You guys know what that is out of office, obviously. No longer works here. So this is pretty important too. In some industries, the data is not that accurate and not that it's not accurate. It's not that good because you'll get like a massive majority of them just giving you the auto reply that says no longer works here. And if you see a huge percentage of that, let's say like above five to 10%, then you know, hey, I need to figure out another, you know, 
know, database to use to kind of crack this audience. Auto replies, just the simple auto replies could be for many reasons. Referral is if they're telling you to reach out to someone else in another department. Pricing requests. So this is a new one that we added recently. What we're noticing is that a big majority of our actual email campaign responses are people that are usually asking for more info and then asking for pricing. And if you don't address that properly, what happens is you just lose the opportunity to get that lead onto a call. They show signs of frustration if you just answer their question and give them more information. And I'll kind of talk about what we do there for the subsequence there later in the video. But yeah, that's that. And then review is if we need the client's intervention and we need their help to answer the question. So if they ask something super specific, like, hey, do you guys integrate with Snowflake? And do you guys, are you guys SOC 2 compliant? And all these things, like our inbox management team isn't going to know the answers to that. So we use review to send this to our client. And I'll kind of show you how we are able to do that. So just to recap, when we get replies from our cold email campaigns, 10% of it's probably automatically being categorized using text-based rules. And then the rest is being categorized by our inbox manager. We're simply going in and we're categorizing according to these tags. And then based on what the tag is, there's going to be a certain action that happens either automatically or manually afterwards. And so that kind of takes me to my next point, subsequences. So if you don't know what subsequences is, subsequences, it's basically how we're able to manage the inbox at scale. So if you're running your initial cadence and you get a reply to email to you saying, hey, can I give them more information? If I tag them as info and I have an info subsequence set up inside of Smartly, it will reply back to their email and say, hey, thanks for getting back to me. Here's more info on our company. And then it will continue to do the follow so until we're able to schedule the call. And so that's the basic understanding of subsequence. If that sounds confusing, go to my other video. I do a really good deep dive into it. And I'll kind of explain all the different types of subsequences that we set up. But what we're realizing works best when it comes to a campaign is a two-step email sequence. And then with the subsequences, only keeping them at three steps. And if you want to see the actual copy we use, go to my other video. And what I'm realizing is that a majority of the leads, you know, if you're using direct response copy, a majority of the leads will come for the first or the second email. And so doing the follow-ups is only going to piss off people and increase your chances of getting marked as spam, which we don't want. And so we do two-step email sequences and we prioritize with our clients reaching out to more net new leads because we notice that's what drives actual results for our clients. And then we have the subsequent set up. And this is kind of a breakdown of what happens with all the subsequences. So information simple. We set up a subsequence and it just enrolls them into the subsequence. Same thing with power. We just have a subsequence that enrolls them into it. Meeting ready leads. So once we actually get a lead that's like, hey, I'm interested and I'm available at 3 p.m. tomorrow to speak, we actually just hand it off to our client and I'll show you what that looks like. Future is if someone once again says, hey, I'd love to speak in Q4. What our inbox management team will do is actually open up that reply inside a smart lead and then schedule an email out on that specific day. Not interested. We actually started using a subsequence made by Ryan. Uh, I forgot what Ryan's last name is. I think his company is called Breakout Creatives. And he saw he posted this on Twitter. And I thought it was really interesting. But basically, when someone says they're just not interested, you respond back to them and say, hey, thanks for the note. Just for my own feedback, what makes this not interesting? Is it because of timing? Is it because of pricing? Is it because of whatever, whatever? And this is really good because a lot of the replies you get back to that kind of help you understand how to make the campaign better. So some people might reply back to that subsequence and say, and you don't want to do three-step follow-up for that, by the way, you just do one step asking for feedback on why they're not interested. And a lot of times they might say, Hey, I'm, I'm not the right person for this. So then, you know, okay, I have a targeting issue or, Hey, this is not relevant because we already have people that do this. And if you see that as a common trend, because everyone's saying that, then you know that, okay, maybe the headcount is too big or maybe the industry is wrong. And so you can come to better conclusions. So so that you can fix the campaign going forward. Unsubscribe, all it does is update the lead status inside of Smart Lead, and then it'll also add it to the client's DNC. Custom positive reply, it sends them the initial first message. So like if someone was like, hey, I'd love to, or like, where are you located out of? And we reply back saying, hey, we're located in Dallas. We'd love to find a time to speak. It'll send that first message. And then we'll have a subsequence that only has two steps in it. And it's just doing the follow-ups. And so that's kind of how that works. Same thing with review. We actually, for reviews, what we do, and, and I'll kind of show you how that process works now. We basically send our response to the client and they can approve the response. And then it sends it to the lead. And then it does the two-step follow-up, similar to how the custom positive reply works. Out of office, just tags it accordingly inside a smart lead. No longer works here, same thing, just tags it accordingly in smart lead. Auto reply, same thing. Um, and then with referral, we actually open up smart lead and then we CC the lead in the reply. So if they say, hey, reach out to Billy Bob Joe at the sales department, we'll CC Billy Bob Joe and say, hey, Nick mentioned that I should reach out to you to discuss the email below. We'd love to find the time to speak. 
what day works better for you. And then with pricing requests, so we started building out subsequences specifically for this. What I'm realizing is that we're actually having a way higher conversion rate when we actually give them a range and pricing. And so a lot of clients don't like this, but you know, once again, you got to push your clients, you got to educate your clients on what works better. And if you kind of just address the objection in the email as, Hey, you know, my pricing is very custom. I need to understand your needs better. Yada, yada, yada. Like you're just not going to get responded to. And so what we started doing now is like saying, Hey, our pricing typically ranges from X to Y, and it's completely dependent on what you're exactly looking for. So I recommend that we hop on a call. It'll take 15 minutes. I'm not a high pressure salesman. I would love to figure out what exactly you're looking for and give you a proper quote. What day works better for you? Day one or day two? Take it like that. Make the email very conversational, very human, and you'll have a much higher chance of converting them. So that's kind of how we add or do the, the pricing subsequence. And then we have the two-step follow-ups afterward. So that's basically what happens with all of the tagging and what happens at the back end. And kind of like I mentioned, these are the subsequences that we added. The pricing subsequence, that's a new one. The not interested subsequence is kind of like what I mentioned, what we learned from Brian at Breakout Creatives. And then pricing subsequence is something I just broke down for you. And then the follow-up subsequences, just to kind of clarify on this, if you have to send a custom initial message, you should have a tag set up to send the, the follow-ups afterwards to you know follow up on the initial message you sent. So we do that on custom positive replies and reviews. And so this is how we handle custom positive replies. So we actually will write the response to the lead. And here's why I recommend this. So we used to have a system, and you'll probably see it in the other video, where we would send the actual response to the client and ask them to respond to us and give us the advice so that we can go back and answer the lead. And what we notice is that a lot of clients just weren't getting back to us in time, right? They would take more than 24 hours. They might take even longer than that. Maybe they not even get into it. And what happens is you're losing a lot of the replies and people that are genuinely asking for, for information. And so we look at the email conversation and we make our best educated guess at what the answer would be. And we send it to the client and then they simply click approve or deny. If they're happy with the response, they click approve and it automatically sends to the lead inside of Smart Lead. If they click deny, they provide us with the proper response. Our inbox management team sees it and then we use that to write the response and send it to the lead. And so that's how you wanna handle custom replies and the ones that are like reviews because otherwise you just lose a lot of opportunities. And so that's our scalable way of kind of handling it. And now let's talk about Smart Leads Master Inbox. So Smart Leads Master Inbox is great. You can build a lot of views. They, you know, release the untracked replies. It's amazing all the way through. We like to use Airtable to actually get all the replies and do all our management out there just because it's easier for us as an agency to be able to handle everything. If you're running campaigns for yourself, you're not running like a B2B cold email legion agency, I wouldn't recommend putting it to Airtable. And if you're under like five clients and you don't get that many replies, like once again, stay inside a smart lease master inbox. But once you get past like 50, maybe even more clients, I would recommend putting it to Airtable because you could just build a lot more automations of rules and you could build a lot more structure to make sure that everything is running the way it should be. And so basically how this works is we're pushing all of the smart lead responses into Airtable. So as soon as we get a smart lead response, it creates a record inside of Airtable. And then in Airtable, if we up update the status change, it will update it inside of smart lead. And that's what kicks off the subsequences and stuff of that sort. So let me kind of show you what that looks like and I'll pop it to our air table. So like I mentioned, we built an interface on top of Airtable, and this is what it looks like when we actually get replies, all the open untagged replies are lined up here. And then it basically has all the information here. If I want to open up Smart Leads Master Inbox, I can click right there. And basically what our inbox management team does is they read the reply and they kind of tag it as uh, accordingly. So uh, you can see that this one is an out of office message. So we literally come in here and we put out of office and we push it and it fires off a webhook to basically go ahead and update this inside of Smart Lead and then it'll remove it from the view. And so that's basically what our inbox management team is doing all day. And the responsibility is to clear out this inbox at the end of every day. And then similarly, if we need to send a reply to the client, this is what it looks like. So it basically just shows in that interface and then we type the response right here and then we just click add a response and then it'll actually send it to the client like it's shown in the Notion doc. So that's basically the process right there for that. And yeah, that's basically our entire process for inbox management in a nutshell. The cool thing too about using Airtable is that we're able to actually be able to just basically hold all of our replies in one section so that we can reference it at a later time. And then the other thing that's really cool about Airtable is it's way easier to be able to keep track of numbers and data and things of that sort. 
So for us, for example, like we're tracking all of these numbers and this is how we're able to make really informed decisions when it comes to our campaign. So I know on average across all 150 clients, what our reply rate is on an average month to month. And, and we basically look at how all the actual tags line up as well. And so we can look at campaigns and say, okay, hey, these are our standing averages across all clients. Is it underperforming or is it performing better? And then we can make analysis and decisions from that. And so you'll see right here, this is like another chart that we fill in every week where we basically just go through all these numbers. And then this is another thing that we just built out recently where we basically have, what's up? We basically send us inside of Slack every Thursday where we just have all of that, what I just showed you inside of Google Sheet, put into a nice little dashboard. And then we're able to review this dashboard with our team and our team knows, hey, is my campaign for my client underperforming or not? So that's basically how we go about inbox management in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or on Twitter, Nick Abraham 12. And yeah, if you guys are looking for a legion agency that people calls, book a call with us at Libra.io and my team will speak to you. But this is Inbox Management 2.0. Hopefully it helps. And if you guys want a more in-depth explanation of like how our Airtable works, I think I did a webinar with Clay and Smartlead during AI week. So just type in Nick Abraham, Clay and Smartlead, and my whole entire presentation will come up and a lot of the inbox management stuff was explained on that call. So yeah, that's basically it.